So what up guys? Um I've got some some big news for you guys today, you know what I mean? This is something that something that I've been hiding from pretty much everybody. The music industry is a world plagued with darkness. Circle, come to you. <laughs> Where do I start? The, the state of the music industry is designed to rip off an artist. That's what I believe. I believe that when the check gets handed to an artist, the check is normally not right. This music industry is fucked up. This music is fucked up. The Bro, I've never met anyone who hasn't been screwed over in music. With its glimmering allure of fame, fortune, and artistic expression, the music industry has long held a mesmerizing grip on the imagination of aspiring musicians. It is a world where dreams are woven into melodies, and talents are projected onto global stages. Yet, behind the shimmering facade lies a complex and often unsettling reality. A reality that exposes the darker underbelly of an industry that sometimes demands more than it gives. But I did six shows in one night. Hey. That night, after that night, my body was fuck like I was tired and I don't get tired you know I'm a hustler mm -hmm. so I'm like no man here I'm working I'm working too much man you see I just never stop to wonder how musicians accumulate so much money throughout the length of their careers only to die broke I never stop to wonder why so many of my favorite artists are depressed drag addicts say no more about the few who have taken their own lives why are so many of them shot dead? Why is there so much beef? Why do they all leave their record labels? Why do they all seem to paint this extravagant bling bling facade when they're not really that wealthy? I got to wonder. Surely, there's something wrong with this industry. It's a world where contracts may be laced with exploitation, identity is modeled to meet market demands, Mental health battles remain veiled, and the pursuit of chat topping success can overshadow the essence of true artistry. <laughs> Brace yourselves, because this whole thing is a rabbit hole. These record labels don't give a shit about you. They don't give a shit about what you believe in. They don't give a shit about how hard you work to get here. The only thing that they give a shit about is your numbers. Because if you got numbers, they can exploit you for dollars. You struggle to get the contract, and then the contract is sort of, you know, the indentured servitude type of thing. We, our first contract was seven albums, essentially 14 years. So I signed that contract when I was 23. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm signing, at 23 years old, I'm signing a contract that's supposed to take me into 37. You're signing a contract for more than half your life. Like I feel like it's been like planned and calculated for like some sketchy is going on like behind closed doors I know about. It's just some fake shit. It's some fake shit. You probably think that all of this is I don't know far fetched. That maybe it's more of an American thing or a Western world phenomena. Cause I mean they have more developed music industries. But look no further than South Africa, my friends. Mzanzi is home to some of the biggest music scandals, or should I say misfortunes in the music industry. So you've got Zahara bursting into the spotlight with her iconic track Loliwe in 2011, quickly soaring to stardom, captivating audiences with her soulful melodies. Yet, behind the scenes, a stark tale of financial distress was unfolding. In 2022, amidst a report of financial turmoil and the theft of six of her South African music awards, Zahara's already turbulent narrative was compounded. Accusations against her former bosses at Tears Records illuminated her alleged exploitation and denied royalties for Loliwe. Zahara courageously took to social media to call out industry figures, including DJs Boo and TK. Say public, universal. Asserting no that they profited unjustly from her musical success. DJ's Boo, however, defends his position. About um, me apparently sending people to go steal Zahara's awards. Jeez. But Ubulelo is my sister. I love her. That's why I was a part of a career to help her grow and succeed. He emphasizes collaborative efforts in crafting Zahara's album. He suggests a different financial reality, 
indicating that Zahara might actually owe Universal Studios money. <coughs> but I mean, it's not surprising, is it? Each party acts in their own interest. What we're seeing here is, should I call it a conflict of interest? The label intends on maximizing profits, whereas the artist desires to receive a fair share of their own success. How about MT's journey from a renowned award-winning artist to a victim of exploitation by his former record label, Ambitious Records? Do you know, in one gig, you probably made your salary with yeah. one song performed. How much was your salary? I, I'm going to disclose, like, the exact price, but, like, you know, it was a decent amount, no care. 50K, 60 yeah, I mean, that's empty, decent, starting. Nah, that wasn't the starting. Shit, and you were More thinking at like this time? Less, way less. Ah. Way less, damn, so under 20. Yeah. Um, fucking hell, bro. You feel me? And, so, and this was when Roll Up was out already. Yeah. Man, this is, yo, that's criminal, bro. I don't think we understand just how big the 2015 hit Roll Up was. The song was voted Song of the Year at the 2015 South African Hip Hop Awards. It peaked at number one on YFM's DJ Speedster's hip hop charts and also peaked at number two on the local iTunes hip hop rap charts. Roll Up has been downloaded over 500,000 times and Risa has certified it three times platinum. Now, let's put that into perspective. Remember All Eyes On Me by AKA or that that shit is by Casper. None of these songs were as big as Roll Up. So much success, only for MT to end up broke and allegedly homeless. You then get to realize that the music industry is a rigged card game. One of the country's popular record labels, Ambitious Records, has gained notoriety within the music industry due to a series of scandals. Rappers like Pretty Ugly departed from the label in less than a year after signing, driven by a sense of unfulfilled promises. Similarly, Amanda Black, a renowned singer, pursued a legal case against the label, seeking 1 million rands in damages for breach of contractual terms. In 2016, rapper Aries set the precedent by departing from the label. His song, Loyal, encapsulated the reasons behind his decision, including the absence of a signed contract and artists not receiving their well-deserved awards. Notably, rapper Fifi Cooper faced a legal battle initiated by Ambitious Records upon her exit. The situation escalated to the point where the Economic Freedom Fighters, a political party, intervened to support the young MC. You see, these accounts offer a stark reminder that the relationship between an artist and a record label is not a happily ever after. <laughs> it's not that kind of story. I'm not gonna go and bad mouth, you know, Cass. He's a good fucking individual. I learned a lot from Cass, but at the same time, I think he needs to learn some shit from himself. You know, you gotta you gotta question your loyalty sometimes. Yeah. You gotta you gotta ask yourself, am I being blindly loyal, and is my loyalty being reciprocated? You might be wondering. How does an aspiring musician end up shackled to a record label? And why do they even need these labels? Well, picture this. You're a young, passionate artist with dreams as big as the sky. All you have is a talent and a burning desire to make it big. But let's be real. You're also in need of resources, exposure, and a roadmap to navigate this labyrinth called the music industry. Enter the record labels. The corporate giants who promise to be your guiding lights in the blinding universe. All right, cool. So I could take this to a lawyer or somebody, right? Cube, those guys are paid to make trouble. They're going to create problems where no problems exist. Jerry, you know I don't know what none of this legal shit mean. All right, none of us do. We're going to need a lawyer before we sign anything. Everybody else has already signed. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Labels are like those cool kids at school who offer to let you sit at their table during lunch. In return, they'll fund your recording sessions, hook you up with snazzy producers, plaster your face on billboards. All this sounds heavenly, right? Well, there's a catch. In exchange for their shiny promises, they want a slice of your artistic pie. And by slice, I mean a big fat chunk. 
they'll own a chunk of your music your future earnings and sometimes even your creative freedom it's like signing a deal with the devil you get a ticket to stardom but you might be paying with your soul and this is where the idea or should i say phrase of selling your soul to the devil in the music industry actually originates these deals my friends are the real deal breakers we're talking about contracts that tie artists to a label's whims relegating them to mere puppets in a grand show but wait there's more these contracts often demand exclusive rights to an artist's music a cut from their earnings and a tight grip on their artistic decisions it's like trading your artistic integrity for a glittering facade this story would probably be incomplete without the case of Brenda Fassi cuz her story is nothing short of jaw dropping Brenda Fassi was a true luminary in the South African music industry she commanded stages with a voice that resonated through hearts and history <laughs> her achievements oh boy where do i start five south african music awards including best female artist and song of the year in 1999 a sweep in 2004 with best selling release of the decade and best song of the decade a lifetime achievement award in 2005 fasi's radiance also extended internationally she claimed three kora awards including titles like most promising female artist of africa and best female artist of africa in 1996 plus the esteemed jury special award in 2001 even in the realm of public opinion she shone bright securing the 17th spot in the top 100 great south africans yet her story for all its triumphs carries an inexplicably sorrowful undercurrent how could an artist with such monumental achievements who captivated hearts and souls across the nation find herself tangled in clutches of bankruptcy and addiction <laughs> you know to me it's an enigma that defies the logic of success like how does so much success end up in mere ruins right how do people who appear so well off end up as mere drug addicts you go deep into the music industry and realize that beneath the fame and spotlight lies a labyrinth of harsh reality we'll catch you guys on the other side it's your boy Ricky Rick if you never hear from me again i love you god bless you good night now as if navigating through the maze of contracts and exploitation wasn't challenging enough there's another haunting specter that lurks behind the glitz and glamour of the music industry mental health struggles picture this you're on stage the spotlight is blinding the crowd is roaring and your heart races with acceleration but what happens when the curtains fall the crowd disappears and you're left with nothing but silence it's in these quiet moments that the real battle begins artists often find themselves grappling with an invincible adversary depression but why How can someone with the world at their feet feel like they're sinking into darkness? First, let's unravel the threads that weave this tangled web of despair. The very nature of the industry breeds a unique set of challenges. The constant scrutiny, the pressure to produce hits, the fear of fading into obscurity can be suffocating. Remember those contracts that we talked about earlier? They can be like chains, binding artists to expectations and restrictions that may not align with their true selves. Add to that the relentless touring, the sleepless nights in hotel rooms, and the loneliness that often accompanies a life on the road. It's like living in a perpetual whirlwind, where the highs are euphoric, but the lows can be devastating. Ricky Rick's passing shook the nation. A stark reminder that even those who seem invincible can be shattered inside. He wasn't alone. This story could easily become a heartbreaking raw core of artists who've succumbed to depression or taken their own lives. Proverb, WHP, Flaba, and more recently, 
Java and MT have openly spoken about their battles with depression. These stories reveal a troubling pattern. But why? Why does the music industry become a breeding ground for this darkness? It's a cocktail of factors. The industry's constant demands, the very fleeting nature of fame itself, the lack of a support system that truly understands, and even the culture of toxic competition can chip away at an artist's mental well-being. It's essential to remember that fame does not come with a shield against pain. In fact, it can sometimes amplify it. The very qualities that make artists shine, sensitivity, creativity, depth, can also make them susceptible to emotional turmoil. But that's not the end of it. Let me introduce you to Payola, or should I say, a corrupt industry. You could have the most amazing song in South Africa. Yeah. And they could miss it. And it's hard because you're competing with Payola. You know, mm. there's people who have proper guap. Payola? Because I'm, I'm, yeah, um, first of all, let me tell you the truth, bro. The first thing is, I don't know how it works. Cap. Payola is a tale as old as the industry itself. It's the story of backroom deals, creased palms, and the manipulation of airwaves. Imagine this, you're cruising down the highway, your favorite radio station playing hit after hit, but here's the twist. Those songs might not have earned their spots on the charts purely through talent and hard work. No, behind the scenes, some puppeteer with a fistful of dollars might be pulling the strings. Now, picture this scenario. A record label executive slips some cash under the table to a radio DJ. In return, the DJ gives the label's artists more airtime, making them sound like the next big thing. It's like musical bribery, where the song that gets played isn't necessarily the best, but the one that paid the most. That catchy tune that's been stuck in your head for weeks? Well, it might owe its popularity more to dollar bills than genuine fan love. And while Payola might seem like an industry urban legend, it's been the dirty little secret for ages. But why? Why does an industry that thrives on creativity and self-expression resort to such shady tactics? Enter gatekeeping. The bouncer at the VIP section of the music industry club. You see, gatekeeping is like the snobbish guardian of the industry's golden gates. It's the reason why the music scene can sometimes feel like an exclusive party and only a chosen few get the invitation. Gatekeepers are the decision makers who hold the keys to fame, fortune and the coveted record deals. They decide who gets in and who's left out in the cold. But here's the kicker. Gatekeepers aren't necessarily music experts with a divine ear for talent. <laughs> nope. More often than not, they're influenced by other factors. You guessed it right. Money. Labels that want to ensure their artists make it big can flex their financial muscle to get the right ears to listen and the right doors to open. Now, you might be wondering, why do artists need to be signed to labels in the first place, right? Can they just do it all on their own? Well, the answer is a mix of harsh realities. I mean, think about it. The music industry is actually pretty complex and navigating it solo can be overwhelming. You've got to wear multiple hats, artist, manager, marketer, all while hoping someone notices your talent amidst the noise. Labels with their established networks and resources can offer a shortcut through the maze. They've got the power to amplify your voice, catapult you into the spotlight, and give you a shot at the big leagues. But remember what we discussed earlier? The devil's deal of trading your artistic integrity for fame? Yep, that's where it gets tricky. They might sign you, but that doesn't mean they won't want a hefty piece of your creative pie in return. There's also this. $75,000. It's 
sign the contract, and all this money is yours. That's my money anyway, Jerry. I earned that money. Now, I wrote a lot of his songs. Mm -hmm. We've been performing on this tour for months, selling out shows, selling records. I know it's plenty of money. <laughs> really? Jesus Christ. Give me my money, Jerry. How the hell do you think this works? How the hell do you think all of this gets paid for? The hotel rooms, the tour buses, security, the parties, all this shit. How do you think it gets paid for? You think it's free? Why are you doing this now? If we were so good, why didn't you give us contracts in the beginning? Because nothing is a sure thing, Cube. Even a great talent can crash and burn. I guess at the end of the day, all I'm trying to say is behind the glamorous music industry of fame and glitz lies a battlefield of exploitation, mental struggles, corruption and elusive dreams. As you tune in to your favorite tracks, let this story remind you that every note you hear has a story. A story that deserves to be told. <laughs>